At the start of the 1930s, the British War Office began researching a replacement for the service dress uniform that had been in service since the early 1900s. Over several years, some of the ideas tested included deerstalker hats and safari jackets. However, after extensive field trials of other uniforms, battle dress surge, often incorrectly referred to as 1937 pattern, was adopted just before the start of the Second World War and would remain in service as the British Army's standard uniform until the 1960s. The uniform was designed with the needs of mechanised infantry in mind, and was inspired by 1930s wool ski suits that were less restrictive to the wearer, used less material, stayed warm even while wet, and were more suited to vehicle crews and service dress. It was composed of a streamlined short jacket made of khaki wool serge, buttons to the outside of high-waisted wool serge trousers. The sleeves of the jacket had a forward curve built into them so that they were more comfortable to wear whilst prone or shouldering a rifle. On the trousers there was a large map pocket on the front near the left knee, and a single pleated pocket for the field dressing on the right upper hip. One problem often developed however, a gap between the blouse and trousers would open up at extreme movements such as crawling or sprinting, and buttons often popped, so white cotton braces were issued to combat this. A woolen collarless shirt was worn underneath the blouse, which was buttoned all the way up and the collar closed with a double hook and eye arrangement. Officers could tailor theirs to accommodate a collared shirt and tie if needed. Short webbing anklets or gaiters covered the gap between the trousers and the ankle boots, further adding to the streamlined look and keeping mud and debris out of the boots without having to use putties or taller more expensive leather boots. Battle dress was issued widely beginning in 1939 in the British Army. Those shortages meant that some units of the British Expeditionary Force went to France in 1940 in service dress. Some officers initially refused to wear battle dress, contrary to orders. It is said that one guards major declared, I don't mind dying for my country, but I'm not going to die just like a third-rate chauffeur. Battle dress surge, being the original pattern of battle dress uniform, commonly and incorrectly referred to as 1937 pattern, had a fly front, pleated pockets with concealed buttons and an unlined collar. The trousers had a large map pocket on the left leg front with a concealed button and a small single pleat dressing pocket on the front of the right hip. Four belt loops which fastened at the top with buttons and tabs with buttons were fitted to the cuffs to fasten the trousers round the ankle. 1940 pattern battle dress introduced in 1940 saw some small changes to the original design. A lined collar and a slightly closer cut to the blouse and trousers were introduced, with a new dressing pocket on the trousers including two pleats and a revolving shank button. 1940 austerity pattern battle dress, occasionally called 1942 pattern, was introduced in 1942. It deleted the fly front, so the front buttons as well as the pocket and cuff buttons were now exposed and pocket pleats on the blouse were removed. Early manufacture included two inside pockets, soon reduced to a single pocket. Plastic buttons were introduced, rather than the brass dished buttons of battle dress surge. The trousers lost their belt loops and ankle tabs, and the pocket buttons were now exposed and made of brown or green plastic like those of the blouse. It was this austerity pattern that equipped the soldiers landing in Italy, on D-Day, and in northwest Europe. Although early patterns were issued until stocks were exhausted, and were commonly seen alongside newer variants later in the war. The photos just displayed were of my reproduction battle dress surge from Soldier of Fortune. On the website, the blouse is labelled as battle dress surge, however, it has a lined collar, making it 1940 pattern. The trousers are of the earlier pattern, as they do not have the updated dressing pocket like the 1940 pattern should, making the blouse and trousers a mixed match. Other than this, it is a superb reproduction, and the material feels and looks fantastic. 
The cut is an inch or so too long on the blouse, but it's passable. And most of all, it's an affordable but quality product. Aside the mismatch between variants, I'm very pleased with the product. Now imagine me in the Maginot line, sitting on the mine in the Maginot line. Now it's turned out nice again, the army life is fine. Hitler can't kid us a lot, 